Hey friends, today we're going to take a look at an Ableton feature that so many people don't know about, and it's super powerful, and that's clip modulation. I've met people that have been using Ableton Live for over a decade, and they didn't even know this thing existed, or how to use it, or why you'd even want to. All right, so let's check out clip modulation. <laughs> Okay, so here we are in session view, and let's go ahead and map a couple parameters of this bass line. This is what it sounds like. Pretty, pretty boring basic stuff. So what I'm going to do is, first I'm going to map a couple things to this instrument rack. So I'm going to map the filter frequency, let's do the warping, and we'll also do the position of the wavetable in this wavetable. Okay, so now we have a... Right, just some classic controls here. Okay, so let's say, for example, I want the bass line to do this. Okay, so maybe up until now, the way you've been doing this is you've gone into the clip and you've said, all right, filter frequency, cool. I'll just make some automation, right? I'll do something akin to this. Okay, so now we have this sound. And as we can see, the filter frequency is doing that kind of thing I was talking about. And that's rad, okay? That's pretty cool. Only thing is, is that, check out what happens once I change this filter frequency. All of a sudden, it doesn't animate. I can't offset this filter frequency anywhere because it'll what it'll do is it'll break the automation. And as you can see up here, the re-enable automation button has lit up in red. So the only way to get it to do what it just did before is to turn this back on. And once I move it, I take control of this absolutely, right? So how do we get around this? What I'd rather do is I'd rather offset this. So as the filter frequency goes down, it moves dynamically with that being the center point of my modulation. Okay, let me illustrate this. So instead, I'm gonna go into this clip, okay, and I'm going to delete this automation. It's gone, okay? Now instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the modulation, okay? So you can see there's two lanes here. One is red and one is blue. And as we can see, the blue is already at 100%, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the same thing, okay? So maybe we'll do something like this and like this. And I'll go ahead and copy that, paste it a couple times to cover the whole riff, okay? So let's go ahead and listen to the result. Now check this out. I can actually take my filter frequency and I can offset it, okay? So now I can control this still while I have modulation to this. And that's the power of modulation. You can change the control and basically create what's known as an offset. We're offsetting the center point of this modulation, okay? What we could do is we could also go in here and we can take this entire thing and shift it up a little bit, which might make a bit more sense. Maybe we'll go up to here, okay? And now we'll get maybe more of a range on this. Now you can see what we're doing is we're offsetting the middle of that filter frequency, okay? Now, you might be saying, well, hey man, like, w this doesn't matter. Like, I could just go into envelope two and go into the matrix and map that to the filter frequency. Let me show you the difference. If you did that, you would accomplish this thing where it would go, right? You would accomplish that. But what you can't do with envelope two, for example, is to go into the clip and let's say, all right, maybe for this bar though, we want this to be lower, okay? And maybe for this bar, we want this to be flat, right? And then I want this one to go all the way down. You can do complex modulations inside of the clip. This is basically like creating a super crazy LFO, right? Let's go ahead and listen to this now. And I'll go ahead and turn up the resonance so we can hear this a bit better. In fact, we could get even crazier with this. Let's go ahead and make some of these ramp up instead. Do something like that. I'll turn on my pencil tool and I'll make this kind of a stepped thing. Maybe at the end we'll do a stepped kind of climb up and down. Now we've got some crazy complex modulation. Let's take a listen to this. Thank you. 
right? And I can still move my filter frequency. Also, real quick, if you're enjoying this video and you're enjoying my teaching style, I also teach Ableton online courses. I have three really crazy courses and I'm working on a fourth right now. We have mixing and mastering with Ableton Live, we have sound design and synthesis, and we have songwriting and composition. And now I'm working on the live performance with Ableton Live course. So if you want to learn more about those things, they're in the description in the comments. All right, let's get back to it. So let's go ahead and, and add some more modulation to this. So I'm gonna click on oscillator one effect one, which happens to be warping. I'll double click on the clip and now we can see oscillator one effect and now we can mess around with this modulation. So maybe in this case, I'll do some crazy stepping around, right? Let's go ahead and make this grid a little bit more like that. And I'm gonna step this control around, okay? So that each time we hit this, we're gonna get kind of this different wacky result, right? So now we have Now, because this is modulation, I can offset this. At this moment, we've got that kind of pulse widthy kind of sound, but if I move this up, watch. Now listen to how different the timbres are. If I'm all the way over here, we get just kind of that thin pulse width kind of sound without any real like low end in it. But if I, if I move it over here, we get this full range kind of Right? Let's have more fun. So now we have the oscillator position. Now, I wanna show you something else. You don't have to be stuck to this kind of, you know, gritty kind of like, you know, landscape kind of look, right? Another thing you can do is you can select this entire thing, right click, and you have all these shapes. So now I can make a classic LFO, right? So now this is just an LFO affecting this as modulation, okay? It's not automation. Automation and modulation are very different things. So going back into bass, now we can watch this kind of thing move. And as you can see, we've limited the range from zero to 50%. If I wanna go all the way up, I could go up to 100. So in that way, what this knob becomes is basically an attenuator, okay? So if I want to remain, for example, from 100 to 50, I have to go back into the clip and say, all right, if you have this all highlighted, right, you have this whole modulation highlighted, check this out, these little squares here, right? So I could say, all right, the lowest it'll ever get is 50%. Now if we go back to the bass, we can watch. And let's say we want that to maybe remain somewhere in the middle, from 75 for example, to 25, right? All you gotta do is mess around with the knob, okay? So something else I wanna show you is that this is really useful for live performance, okay? Let's go ahead and duplicate this clip. Now, if I duplicate this clip, I've duplicated not only the notes, right? But you can see also, yes, the modulation has been duplicated. So maybe in this one, I'll select this area and I'll say, all right, let's go ahead and do a triangle and now I'll copy this, paste it, and then maybe I'll go back to some of my other parameters, like the filter frequency, and I'll say, instead of this crazy modulation, on this specific one, we're gonna do a giant filter sweep, okay? So now that's on this clip, and if I look at the filter frequency on this clip, it does this, so check this out. Now we have... All right, so that's what we had before. Now check this out. And I can dynamically go back to the other one. Right? So imagine having, you know, eight or nine clips with a bunch of different styles of modulation on it where you are interacting with the offset. Basically, you're interacting with what offsets the modulation as opposed to the very meticulous, specific, crazy modulation that you make, right? So that's the fun of this. Now let's talk about something else. Maybe you are just in arrangement view. You're just using Ableton to create you know, arrangements of music. You're making songs as opposed to performing live. Modulation still plays a huge role in that. And let me show you how. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and hit record, and we're gonna record these two clips into arrangement view. All right, so I've got some clips recorded. Now we're gonna look at the arrangement view. All right, so I'm just gonna loop this area right here. Now, at this moment, we can't see anything. We have to go ahead and, and look at our automation, okay? Now, in this automation lane, all we're seeing is the red automation. We can't see the modulation. Modulation is at the clip level, no matter what view you're in. If you're in session view or if you're in arrangement view, modulation lives in a clip. So we can still see, hey, that clip still has modulation in it, right? So inside each one of these clips, we can have this crazy modulation. But let's say we want to mess with the offsets. That's the beauty of this. So I can say, what I want to do is I want to mess with the oscillator one position, which happens to be modulated. We can see that. So maybe instead what I can do is I can do like a landscape style automation to this, okay? But I'm still retaining the modulation. So let's go ahead and play this. Now watch. I'll go ahead and loop this right here. We can see a red dot has appeared over oscillator one position, okay? And what that means is that now the automation is absolute, okay? So, and maybe that's the best way to understand this. Automation is an offset control that's absolute. It absolutely moves the knob to where you put it, and it always is going to be that. And the moment you touch it, watch what happens up here. The moment you touch any parameter that's been automated, boom, it turns gray and you see this button appear. So you have to click re-enable automation to get that automation to happen again. Again, this is the principal difference between modulation and automation, okay? So the automation can still be recorded. And if you want to look or edit the modulation, all you got to do is double click on the clip and then you can change some aspect of this crazy stuff and get something else going, right? Awesome. Well, hopefully this has got your gears turning a little bit. As you can see, modulation is really powerful, not only in live performance, but also in arrangement view. If you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you next time, everybody. Thanks for watching.